Not only do you need to find what you're passionate about, you need to turn it into an expertise, which is undeniable. You have to recognize that if you love doing this thing and you quit on it, you will regret that decision for the rest of your life. You should not risk your family's well-being. What you should do is work at night and on weekends on something you're passionate about. Rise and shine! It's espresso time! Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I am not a morning person. But if you start your day with a morning routine that inspires you, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of espresso from Jay Shetty. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. In terms of finding your purpose, that seems like it's the first step is getting comfortable with yourself, understanding that. How do we take that next step towards finding that purpose? Yeah, so for me, I, I define it as your passion is for you, your purpose is for others. So your purpose is when you use your passion to serve others. That's the, the, the link. So for me, the focus actually first becomes what's your passion? Like, what are you passionate about? What do you enjoy doing? And then the, miss, the parts that, that's usually missed, so everyone here is follow your passion, find your passion. It's like a cliche, it's everywhere. The difference is get really good at it. Like get so good at it. And everyone always misses that point. You can be as passionate as you want about tennis, but if you're not really good at tennis, no one's gonna care and no one's gonna take note. And I think that's often missed that not only do you need to find what you're passionate about, you need to turn it into an expertise, which is undeniable. And that requires the hard work, that requires the work ethic, that requires the early mornings, that requires the training in whatever field you wanna be. And then, and that's gonna make you successful. So when you figure out your passion and you get really good at it, you're gonna become successful. But you're only gonna be happy when you use that success to help other people. And then you've got to figure out that link to purpose. So you're going to find your purpose. So when you realize, hey, I'm really good at this. I love it. I get a lot of happiness from doing it. When you start using that to make a difference in other people's lives in any way, it automatically switches into a purpose. So you don't need to find your purpose. It's just an automatic evolution of finding your passion and being really good at it. And that's where we're messing up, that we haven't found something we love and we haven't found something that we love that we've got really good at. So what we usually do with our lives is we do things that we're not good at and don't love, right? Or we do things that we're good at, but don't love. And we need to switch into the spaces of things that we love, but are not good at and get really good at them and start finding out things that you are good at and you do love. People quit on their passion because they're not getting results. You quit on it because you're not getting the satisfaction of knowing that this thing is working, that you're getting results, that people care, that you're making money, that you're growing a business. You love it, but you haven't figured out how to turn it into a business yet. And too many people quit because they don't have enough momentum. You have to recognize that if you love doing this thing and you quit on it, you will regret that decision for the rest of your life. You have to keep going. You have to find a way to persevere because chances are you're just not good enough yet. And not good enough as a human. You're great as a human, you just don't have the skill set yet for how to win in the business that you're trying. And I see so many entrepreneurs just quit and give up too early. They have a deep love, a deep passion for it, but they quit because they're not getting the results and their family tells them to quit and go do something safe and logical and practical. And then you end up hating the rest of your life. I look at my YouTube channel as an example. <laughs> I'm an introvert. Uh, it doesn't come across, I know, in a lot of my videos, you may not believe me, but I am. Uh, it's true, I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people. Uh, I don't like having meaningless conversations. I, I never chat with the person you know, next to me, sitting down. I just, I'm an introvert. And when I started making videos, I was super self-conscious. Um, I felt like I had to memorize everything. I was also a perfectionist. And it was really hard for me to make videos. And I really struggled internally between I love visual content, I'm a visual learner. I wanted to make videos because I wanted to have visual content out there for people like me, for 19 year old Evan who was struggling in his business and just books weren't enough and I wanted to have visuals. But there's that desire coupled with, well, you're an introvert and you suck on camera and you're not very good at coming up with speech topics and all of that and it was all true. But you know what? I made my first videos and I just, I loved it. 
I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> and you can go back, go back on my main channel, not this one, but go back on my main channel and you can see <laughs> the entire journey and process of my first video and how awkward and uncomfortable it was and had a lot more hair. Uh, but you can go back and watch it. But I just liked the process of it. And I've talked about the story before, but as I've gone in the first five years, it took me five years to get the 7,000 subscribers on my channel. Five years to get the 7,000 subscribers. And then five years to go from 7,000 to 2 million. And now we're, you know, closing in on 3 million. Just on the main channel. Why keep going? Why, why, why keep making content? I mean, anybody who looks at the content, you can see that it wasn't very good. I could tell myself I'm an introvert and this isn't, this isn't working. You know, my first video took a year to get one comment that wasn't my mom or my sister. Just all of this, no results, constant reminder of failure. <laughs> <laughs> but just keep going. Why? Why? How do you keep going for five years? You know, some people get 7,000 subscribers in their first day on YouTube, and it took me five full years to get there. Why? Why keep going? Because I loved it. I liked the process of doing it. And it wasn't until I got better at the skill, right? Not better as a human. It's not that you're not good enough again as a person. You just don't have the skill set yet. And for some people, it's easier than others. For me, it was very difficult. For me, it was a giant struggle to get good at the skill of making content and being in front of the camera and not having as many insecurities and self-doubt and feeling not good enough. And so it took five years to get to 7,000. Even that, that's not even a, a giant number, right? 7,000 after five years. I think most people would think of that as a pretty big failure. 350 videos until I wasn't embarrassed by myself, where I would make a video watch it back and I couldn't watch it back. I, I refused to watch my own videos because I felt like it, it just sucked. And because it sucked, because I didn't have the skill set, because I couldn't communicate well on camera, I internalized that to I suck. I couldn't watch back the video because me doing well on camera was the thing that I loved doing and wanted to get better at. Because I wasn't achieving it, I internalized that Evan, you suck as a person. And so my response was, I'm just not gonna watch the videos. And I don't know that that's the healthiest approach, but that's where I was. I couldn't watch my own videos back because I felt bad as a person for spending so much time on something and still not getting good enough at it. And then it was 700 videos until I inspired myself, until I watched one of my own videos back and felt like I'm, I'm on to something, like maybe this has potential, right? 700 public videos before I inspired myself, before I thought like I was actually making some momentum. So you just have to get good at it. I mean, if you're looking at my history, it's really just a, an exercise in consistency in that every day, just keep making content, just keep going, just keep getting a little bit better, a little bit better, right? The 1% better every day. <laughs> it took me a long time to get there. But what's the alternative? Stopping? Quitting? doing something more practical, doing something safer, you end up just hating the rest of your life. I did not want to get to the point where I would imagine myself 10 years later or 20 years later, looking back and saying, I wish I wish I just kept going. I wish I just kept going on that YouTube thing. I wish I just kept doing it instead of settling for a job that I don't like, for a life that I don't want. I wish I just kept going. And that fear of regret used to drive me a lot. And if that helps you, I would lean into it. Like if you are passionate about something, but you're just not seeing the results yet, people aren't responding to what you're doing, you're not getting the customers you need, you're not getting the, the feedback on social media, you're just not, doesn't feel like anything's happening yet. You're putting in a lot of effort, a lot of daily grind, you're, you're putting it in, it's not for lack of trying, you're just not getting the results yet because you're not good enough yet. And your, your progress and your skill development might not even be fast enough, right? You know what something good looks like. You know what somebody who's good at this thing, what, what it looks like. You know what a good YouTube video looks like. You know what a good product looks like. And then you can't make it. You try to make it and, and nothing happens. You know, it's just so slow in the growth. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. 
Because if you quit right now, even though it makes sense, even though it's logical, even though it's practical, you're going to regret it. And yes, here's the realities of making a living. So if you have to go get a job to support yourself, if your business doesn't work out and you need to have a job, I get that. I'm not suggesting you be homeless in trying to pursue your passion. Although some people do take it to that extreme, but I don't think you have to do that. I think you can take a job where one, you're going to learn. The point of having a job is to learn, not just to make money. Have a job where you're actually learning some of the skills that you need. If you want to become a YouTuber, right? Have a job where you're either working for a YouTuber or you're developing communication skills somehow through the work that you're doing. And then the most important part is that you just keep finding a way every day to keep going. That when you come home, you're still spending that half an hour, an hour every day plus on your business. That you don't quit on your hustle. That you remind yourself to get out of your head to get out of the safe, the logical, and practical. And yes, you may not get the results you want yet, but it will pay off. It will be worth it. I'm so grateful that I kept going. There were, there were not even honestly many times that I thought of quitting. I just loved it so much that I, I couldn't imagine not doing it. I, I didn't even think this would ever be a full-time business. I didn't think helping entrepreneurs would be would be a full-time business, let alone one that I could hire 30 people to help me with, right? I thought entrepreneurs have no money. Nobody would hire me to speak. What, I'm going to go speak to some corporation and I'm going to say what? I'm going to tell their employees to go be entrepreneurs? I thought I'd never make money as a speaker. I thought I'd never be good enough to make YouTube content and have that turn into something. I thought I'm, a, I'm an introvert and it's just, that's not what introverts do. I just loved it. And so I found a way to keep going because I didn't want to live the rest of my life with regret. You've got a passion. You've got something that you care about. You've got something that you know can serve and help people. And you're not getting the results that you need yet. And that's normal. And that's the macro patience of just every day getting up and continuing to do it. And know and know and know on one hand that if you keep going, it will work out. And on the other hand, that if you quit now, you'll regret it the rest of your life. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what is your specific plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and get motivated by it, you have a 35% chance of following through. But when you get motivated and then create a specific plan of action, you have a 91% chance of following through. That's what we do here at Believe Nation. We get motivated, but then we do something about it. And when you commit to other people, you increase your chances even further of following through. So what was your biggest takeaway from this video? And then what is your plan of action around for this week? Put it down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. Hey everyone, I have been reading a bit from my friend's book, Evan Carmichael, Built to Serve, and I wanted to share this with you. So, according to a study by Carnegie Mellon University, people with supportive spouses are more likely to give themselves the chance to succeed. They studied 163 married couples and found that people with supportive spouses were more likely to take on potentially rewarding challenges. Those who accepted challenges experienced more personal growth, happiness, and psychological well-being. Now, I can truly say that I've experienced that in my life. When I first met my wife, I was just starting out. I had never released a video. I hadn't created any content. And she was such an important part of feeling supported on that journey. So whether you're in a relationship, whether you're dating, whether you're married, or even if you're single, being supported by friends and a strong community is important. Uh, Build to Serve by Ellen Carmichael, Great book on how you can find your purpose and also on reminding us that we can all make a difference in the world. Thanks, Evan. You should not risk your family's well-being. What you should do is work at night and on weekends on something you're passionate about to find out whether or not it's going to work before you take the leap. If you can actually prove what product or service has demand and people start buying it from you, you can do it like everybody else does. It's a side hustle until it has enough critical mass for you to jump ship. That way you don't take a huge risk. I would not risk my family's income. But if you know something that you really like, 
you can pursue it at nights and on weekends. Yeah, it becomes tough to go to soccer games and picnics, but that's okay because you're pursuing that dream at 38, you're not that old. You can definitely take a risk, but you're not gonna give up your primary income until you have enough proof of concept, proof of customer, proof of sales, proof of cash flow, and all of those things can be done over a couple of year period of doing it as a side hustle. That's how entrepreneurs in your situation get started. If you want another awesome video from Jay Shetty, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Every morning, I sit and I look at my intentions to do anything.